In this video, we're going to review how to do a full neurological assessment. There's quite a few things involved, including level of consciousness, memory, and cranial nerve testing. So we're going to show you the most efficient way to get all of these things done in a coordinated fashion. Supplies you're going to need for this assessment are a pen light, an alcohol swab, a reflex hammer, cotton tipped applicator, and a Snellen chart or other visual acuity chart if you have one available. So the neuro assessment begins the moment you walk in the room. You start assessing whether the patient is awake and alert. If they aren't, start by calling their name, and if that doesn't work, give them a gentle shake. If they're truly just asleep, that will wake them up. If not, increase noxious stimuli till you get a response. Or you may have to start some other assessments if they won't wake up. The next thing you need to do is check for orientation to person, place, and time. Ask the patient their name, what month it is, and where they are. Now, I usually don't ask for a full date because half the time I don't even know what date it is. As with your general assessment, you also want to be looking at their overall mood and affect while listening to the quality of their speech while you talk to them. Now, at this point, you want to let the patient know that you're going to be asking them some silly questions. So what we're trying to do is assess their memory and thought processes. So you can find examples of these in your outlines, but it might include things like, does a stone float on water? Or maybe a question like, what are the four seasons of the year? So this helps you to see how their attention span is, how their memory is, and how their judgment is. Are they following your line of questioning? So once you've done their interview questions and you're confident that they can follow the rest of your instructions, you can move on to cranial nerve testing. First is cranial nerve one, the olfactory nerve. So have the patient close their eyes and ask them to identify a common smell. The best and most available option you have is an alcohol pad. So just open the package and wave it a few inches from their nose. Next, we're gonna test cranial nerves two, four, and six. These are all about the eyes. So you wanna have the patient cover one eye at a time and read a visual acuity chart or just a sign on the wall opposite the bed. Once you've tested both eyes, you can move on to your pupil exam. So what we're looking for is Perla. Pupils equal round reactive to light and accommodation. So grab your pen light, shine it into the patient's eyes one at a time. I usually just ask them to look right at my nose. When you shine the light, you're also looking for uh, pupils to constrict equally when you shine in the opposite eye. That is the accommodation part of Perla. So now you can do your six cardinal movements. Just ask the patient to follow your finger with just their eyes and make sure all the movements are smooth and coordinated. Once you've done that, you can move on to the cranial nerves of the face. I usually start with cranial nerve seven, the facial nerve. I ask the patient to smile, frown, raise their eyebrows, and close their eyes tight, and show their teeth. All the while, you're looking for symmetry from side to side. Then I'm gonna do cranial nerve five. Palpate the jaw while the patient clenches their teeth. You could even assess TMJ at this point if you wanted by feeling for any clicking when they open and close their mouth, and make sure you ask them if there's any tenderness or pain. Then you can just lightly touch both sides of their forehead, cheeks, and chin, and make sure the patient feels it equally on both sides. Now we're gonna test our cranial nerves related to the tongue and swallowing. We wanna make sure they can swallow safely. So one thing we can do is have the patient swallow a sip of water. We wanna make sure that they have no issues swallowing, that they don't cough or gag while they swallow. Then have them open their mouth, stick out their tongue, and say, ah. You should see the tongue midline and the uvula should rise midline as well. Last is cranial nerve 11. Have the patient shrug their shoulders and then turn their head side to side against resistance. And that's it for your cranial nerves. So we're almost done. Next is sensory. Many times I'll just ask the patient if they have any numbness or tingling anywhere, but to specifically assess this, we're gonna get a cotton tipped applicator and break off a piece of the wood. Now you're gonna have one sharp side and one dull side. Now don't push hard, but just show the patient on their arm which one is sharp and which one is dull, and then have them close their eyes and simply work side to side on the arms, asking the patient to tell you whether they feel sharp or dull. Again, don't push too hard, we're not trying to torture them but you also want to check uh, the lower extremities as well. For the same thing, you're checking side to side. Do they feel the sensations the same on both sides? And can they differentiate between sharp and dull? Just mix it up, don't be predictable. Now you can quickly assess your reflexes. Just grab your reflex hammer, test the biceps and triceps reflexes on both arms. 
Again, you always want to compare things side to side to make sure there's no deficiencies. Now we need to assess the patellar and Achilles reflexes on the legs. Now for this, you may have to have the patient sit on the side of the bed so that you can get to them, but that's okay because we're about to get them out of bed anyways. So again, check both sides, patellar and Achilles reflexes, the Achilles being on the back of the heel. Then you're gonna to wanna to check a Babinski reflex by pulling your reflex hammer up the lateral side of the foot. You should see the toes curl under. If they don't, that could be a bad sign. Now the very last thing we're gonna check is balance and coordination. If the patient's able and there's no reason they can't, have them stand up at the side of the bed with their feet together and then have them close their eyes and hold that position for 20 seconds. This is called the Romberg test. They should be able to stand without falling the whole time. Now a little bit of sway is totally normal. You can just hold your hands in front of and behind them to make sure they don't fall. After this, I'm gonna have the patient do the finger to nose test. They need to touch your finger and then touch their nose and go back and forth as you move your finger around. This text tests for ataxia or uncoordination. It should be smooth and simple and sometimes patients can have a lot of fun with it. Now the very, very last thing you have to test is their gait. Just have them walk a few feet away from you and then walk back towards you. Their gait should be smooth and effortless with no sway. Now if they regularly use any kind of cane or walker, make sure you let them use that when they walk. Now even in a perfectly healthy patient, some of these assessments might be difficult to do either because of medications the patient's on, a lack of equipment, or some other barrier, but that's okay. Just make sure that you use any alternatives you can and document everything objectively. So that's a full neurological exam. I hope that was helpful. Make sure you check out the outline to get details of the assessments that we did. Now go out and be your best selves today, guys. And as always, happy nursing. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.